Episode 23. No one famous ever wore the number 23. LeBron James. Michael, Michael Jordan. This ain't, the, this ain't the time or the place for the last dance, okay? This Michael is Jeffrey Jordan. This is LeBron. This is Bronny. This is Bryce Maximus. This is Twist. This is episode 23. We got a great show lined up for you. Yeah. Check us out on Mondays on the RTF Sports Network. We're live on RTF right now. We're on the Twitter. We're on the Facebook. You Show can the month. add us at Twist Sports Talk on everything, as yep. well as our website, twistsportstalk.com. Yep. We have an exciting, exciting, exciting show for you. Really Obviously, we're, we're very festive today. We're bringing the warm weather to you. It's a little nipply out there. Yeah, but, it is. Uh, Especially when you get water thrown in your face. Yep, yep. Yeah. Greg, we, before the show, we did the uh, fishbowl bet, yep. which Greg lost. Oh. We actually added a new segment today, which Matt came up with. Yep. So we're going to end the show with that today and every other day. Yeah. But we're going to start the show off with this, first and foremost. We're going to start the show off with a happy Mother's Day. Pre-Mother's Day. Pre -Mother's to Day. all the moms out there. Mama Ben's, Mama Reeves, Mama Bauman. Michaels. Michaels, Terry Michaels, Terry Michaels. Come on, <laughs> come are. on, you're better than that. Yeah, yeah. When chief, Chief, technically is kind of a motherly. <laughs> oh my god, thing going on there. He just um, pulled out his gun and pointed it at your face. Anyways, all the moms in Twist Nation and the Twist family, happy Mother's Day weekend to you. Uh, happy fishing opener to uh, Kevin Benz out there and all the other anglers Look at it. putting a line in the water. Uh, yeah, your dad does not just have one line in the water right now. He's got like six. Got a couple lines, I guarantee you. Couple, Don't tell the DNR though. A couple 13, 14 down too. Back in his hate bash. Please. So all of our interviews are brought to you by Bricks. 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 Boatworks. Yeah. They are essential and they are open and they are ready to get you out on those lakes. Darn right. So our interview this week is a Minnesota twin hitting coach in the minor leagues. Sean Schlechter. Yeah. We are happy to have him and we are going to bring him on the show. Sean, how, how are, are you, sir? Gentlemen, how are we doing? Oh, Good. we're fabulous, man. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. I know your schedule's probably jam-packed right now. <laughs> um, so for you to pencil us in, that's it's an honor. So yeah, lot, lots of uh lots of tea times and and listening to podcasts like your guys is so <laughs> a lot of hitting videos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Just sharpening the skills. So what's your uh Besides golfing and things like that, do you have any other routines to keep you sharp for the hopeful season, right, to start hopefully soon? Yeah, so right now, um, mainly just just keeping in touch with our players and and making sure that they're all safe and and doing well and and uh, you know doing what they can with with what they have, but uh continuing to to build those relationships is huge huge for me being new to the organization this year so th i think that's first and foremost is is just continuing to stay in touch with them but um you know doing some own personal development stuff reading and um you know gotten on some podcasts and and done some zoom calls and and um, continuing to try to learn and and bring some of that knowledge back to our organization to to continue to build so Excellent. Well, congratulations, you know, for, for joining the organization. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey leading up to this point? Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. Um, so originally, uh, a little bit about myself. I'm from Burnsville, Minnesota. So 
Me too. Graduate. Woo! Yep, yep. I, I knew that, Mike. So hometown guy. Uh, grew up a Twins fan. Um, played played baseball, basketball, um, a little bit of hockey early on, and and some football growing up. And had a fortunate opportunity to to go play college baseball down in Iowa at a junior college in Mason City called uh, North Iowa Area Community College. And and after I was done playing, I got into coaching right away there. I did some some Legion ball coaching up here in my summers uh, in between seasons in college. And then uh, kind of got into the, the college coaching realm down there and and was there for seven and a half years. Um, and then this opportunity came up with, with the Twins. And now I'm here today. That's excellent. I remember back in my glory days of baseball in uh, junior high and high school, I went to Tom Nevers Hitting School. Okay. Um, that was out of like Prior Lake or Chaska or something like that. So I hit dingers. I mean, <laughs> that, that's basically what I did. Look at those pipes. You know, Tom, it's no Tom big good job then. Yeah. So uh, how how did you get the offer originally? I know you said Legion Ball, but who kind of offered you to get in the coaching area? Yeah. So uh, my career, actually, my playing career, which was not very, uh, very good one. First off and first mo or first off. Uh, so my career ended by uh, rotator cuff and labrum Ooh. injury. So uh, during that, it was my sophomore year in college. I was kind of, uh, helping out just, you know, hitting some, hitting some fungos and doing some flips, uh, working my way back while rehabbing. And, and like I said, I was doing some, some coaching for Legion ball up here at the time. Um, and, and that's kind of when I felt, when I fell in love with, with the aspect of, of what, you know, the day-to-day -day demands are to, to be a coach and, um, so I, I just kind of helped out. And as I found out that rehab wasn't going very well and I wasn't going to play, uh, you know, up to the to the caliber of, of skill set that I wanted to play at, um, I kind of decided to to jump into the coaching side of things. And our head coach down there at the time um, in Mason City, uh, luckily a job had opened up and, and I kind of fell into that small stipend role. and. Um, you know, I, I was working with the catchers and, and assisting with hitters and, and, um, you know, just looking for any experience that I could, uh, moving forward. And then, you know, as, as we've seen the trend here, uh, over the last couple of years in professional baseball, uh, you're seeing a lot of college coaches, uh, starting to be hired, uh, to the professional ranks, uh, with, with the knowledge of, of uh, player experiences and and bringing on the, the technical side, uh, technology side of things, um, I think that the, you're seeing that transition there from from college baseball to professional baseball. So that's kind of how the opportunity came up, um, and and luckily the the twins reached out to me, and and I thought it was a no brainer going through the interview process to to make that transition with with all the great people that I got to meet through the, through the interview process. Hey, Sean. So, you know, being a student of the history of sports, it's well understood the best coaches are those great at all players, those guys who have to pay attention to everything. And if you know, that's the type of player you were, how much of your time as a coach are you breaking down film? Like showing a guy, Hey, you know, you're not standing behind a guy like you would, you know, coaching a fifth grader. You know, this is how you stand, but how much you, your time are you actually breaking down someone's physical stance or how they're, you know, standing in the plate? All of those basics, even at the level you're at. Yeah. Uh, well, I can tell you, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to gain an edge for our players and, and looking for, for any ways to do so. And, and as a hitting coach at, at the professional levels with, with the resources we have, uh, you know, we have video from, you know, just about everything. We're, we're videoing a ton of stuff in, in practice and in our training environments and um, from, from any inner squad scrimmage or, or any games in the past, we, we probably have video on it. So uh, I personally spend quite a bit of time um, just looking into to how guys move and, and how they're successful in, in what they do as uh, athletes. Uh, so then 
when I actually do say something in a cage, it, it, it has some value. It's, it's just not a, a guess or, you know, something that I just saw with my eye. It's, I, I have to make sure that, that I'm, um, you know, researching the right things to make sure that uh, the guys are, are making the adjustments that they need to make. So not only are we watching video, but we're, we're in, um, you know, in discussions with our strength and conditioning staff and our physical therapy staff. So then we actually understand, um, you know, the limitations, but also the, the mobility and, and efficiencies that each athlete has before we actually do make those adjustments and, and coach them up or, you know, give them, give them the, um, adjustments that they need to make. You know, that's the big thing too with baseball in like the last 10 years is how it's changed so much. I remember when I was younger, it was always keep your elbow up at the plate, you know, and things like that. And now it's completely obsolete. It's about being relaxed, but also just the analytics that go into baseball and coaching now. It's not, oh, this guy's got the face for baseball. It's not about that at all. It's this guy hits the crap out of the ball and he's got an on-base percentage of this. So what are some things that you've learned just by the short time that you've been up in the farm system about dealing with these guys that are already almost just a couple steps away from the league? Are you a player's coach? Or is it more about, you know, really, like you said, really breaking them down and telling them what they don't want to hear? Yeah, I think I think you got to have a good mix of both. Right. And and you, you got to be able to, to to have the knowledge behind it and and be able to to bring bring that to the table and, you know, doing all that research and, and gaining the knowledge and, you know, studying stances and, and how players move. That's that's all important and using the analytics to do so. Um, but uh, as you're making those adjustments with players, if you haven't developed the relationship side with them or be the player's coach, like they're probably not going to take much advice from you anyways. So, um, I think that's, that's goal number one for us is, is to continue to, to help them grow as people and us learn them as people. You know, I, I, during this time, I think I've spent most, the majority of my time doing that is, is getting to know our players of, of who they are as people and not just, you know, the name on their Jersey or, you know, where they got drafted in our organization or, you know, it's, it's, it's not all about that for us, especially, especially in the Minnesota twins organization. Um, you know, we're, we're all about the people and, and who they are and, um, you know, continuing to develop them as, as you know, stand up human beings. And so that's, that's been goal number one for me, especially with all this time off. It's, it's, it's been awesome to, to get to know those guys in those terms. Like, you know, right now I'm um, talking to, to our number one draft pick last year, Keone Cavico, like getting to know him a little bit, like just understanding, like he's really into cars right now. So like, I don't know, I don't know a thing about cars or how to fix them or anything, but like, sharing that with him to where it's like, Hey, you can teach me a little bit here and, and there. And, you know, even those small things to where we can find out like, what do they do away from the field and what's, what their interests are. I think that's a big proponent to what we do on, on that side of the ball as well. Now, back in my baseball heyday, I wasn't, I wasn't good enough to play for the high school, but I did play for BAC Birdsville athletic club. <laughs> we were three time champs. 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Give a, give a ring for that. <laughs> they came up with banging on track. I man. have trophies. Now, I could have used a hitting coach because I remember junior year, I had about a five-game drought with no hits. And when I finally got a hit, was up at Eagle Ridge here. I was so happy I got a hit. I leaped over first base without touching it. <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling this story. And uh, I, got called, I got called out. I threw a fit, yelled at the ump, got kicked out of the game. Uh, but what are some techniques that you're teaching your players that you, you could have taught me? You know, is it just as simple as keep your eye on the ball? Or what are, what are some of the things that could have helped me actually, you know, feel better about those those championships that I didn't really help out with? I was well, <laughs> sounds like sounds like you had a, a pretty uh fun playing career there I yeah know. that's for sure <laughs> but yeah no i've i've played uh i played in that in that same league growing up too and uh that's that's awesome that we kind of sh uh, relate there with that but um yeah i 
the first thing that I can tell you is, is I'd, I'd probably have to watch video of your swing first before I tell you anything. Um, he was shaking. Oh, I was. was. Let's get yeah. your big rhythm guy. Feet together, back of a box. Just no patience, Griffin. No patience. Yeah. Yeah, I just tell you, I just, I'd probably just tell you to hit like Josh Donaldson, like <laughs> yeah. huge leg kick, tons of rhythm, and and let it rip. Like, nice. like yeah. that said, hit dingers, right? It's all about yeah. dingers. It's all about the dingers. dingers we had the girls the there holding the signs up. It wasn't about the game. It was about the girls after the game. <laughs> yeah. We'd have to get you on some tea work, really get you going. Um, so my last question for you is this. You know, obviously hitting has been your niche in coaching. Do you have any plans or goals to move up, you know, in the coaching ranks? Or is hitting kind of just your forte that you want to stick with? That's, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I think hitting is, is kind of my, um, you know, what I'm passionate about. So as, as long as I can stay in, in that, uh, realm of things, I think, uh, you know, I'll probably, you know, continue to, to gain knowledge on it, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm chasing a title by any means at all either. I think I'm pretty fortunate to, just be in the position that I am like, you know, I, I think there's a, probably plenty of people out there that would to uh, would, you know, appreciate to, to have the opportunity to, to coach in an organization that they grew up loving and as a fan. And, um, you know, I don't even consider what I do as work. So like, it's, it's more of a, a hobby in my mind. Um, it just happens to be with some of the best players in the world and, and um, in a, a great organization. So um, any opportunity that comes up that, that allows me to, to continue to, to help make us better, I think that's my, my number one goal. I, I don't think it's about, you know, chasing a, a title or, you know, becoming a, a coordinator or, or a manager or anything like that. I think any opportunity that I can continue to to help players grow and, and get to know them and, and be there for, for those guys. I think that's, that's my, my job is to be a servant. And so that's, that's kind of how I approach it. Any, really any opportunity that I have to do that. So. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate you coming on the twist nation, part of the twist family. Once we're done with this show, we, uh, we upload it on all our social media and I'll, I'll attach you to it, Sean. So we appreciate you coming on. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. I just got to say one more thing. Greg, Skull Bites. Yeah! <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. Green Bay! Oh, beautiful. All, All right. right. Thanks, Sean. Have yep, a good thank day. you, guys. No problem. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Greg. Oh, wow. He, ba he basically said you suck at life. <laughs> beautiful. I don't even get it on the guest. Oh, great way God. to start the oh, show. Yeah. Let's, get, let's get let's into go. it. Let's go, baby. Woo! Man. Uh, oh, headlines for the week. Let's get into it. Look at that so, new uh, big banner. Love the banner. Love the shirts. We all look fresh. I love it. God. All right. So headline number one, uh, the MLB has shortened its 2020 draft from 40 rounds to five. Wow. Um, Major League Baseball will cut its 2020 draft to five rounds as owners looking to save costs in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, the plan, which has been relayed to scouting directors, will allow teams to sign unlimited numbers of undrafted players for $20,000. Uh, the, the draft is expected to begin June 10th. So there's something to look forward to. Uh, number two, Alabama QB Tualia Tugabailoa. The brother. Younger brother of Tua. He's a beast. Enters the transfer portal. What? what? He says, we're both leaving the tide this year. Wow. So, uh, Where's he yeah, going? Uh, he was ranked out of the 2019 recruiting recruiting class and as a number five pro style QB. Um, he has not announced where he is going. All that he has announced is that he is entering the portal, which, you know, that's a process in of itself. I mean, he chose Alabama, but as uh, who was the gentleman that took over for two at the end of the year? Mac. Mac is his first name. I can't Mac Miller. Mac Brown, I believe it was. Mac Brown. That seems right. We'll go with that. Well, uh, he was the one that kind of took over the starting role. He's expected to be their starter this year. So 
Mac, uh, Mac Brown's the former coach from Texas. Yeah. Well, it's his it's son, Mac, Mac okay. Jr. Yeah. Big Mac. Mac. Big Mac attack. Yeah. Big Mac. Do you know so, why they call it the portal? Because it's like when Mario goes in the green portal yeah. into another dimension. Whoop, 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 whoop. You guys talk about, you talk about video games? Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah, Greg. So, uh, yeah, he had passed up on Florida, LSU, Michigan, Nebraska, Oregon to choose Alabama originally. So, somebody's going to be looking for him. Wouldn't that be funny if he goes to Oklahoma? Sky Uma. Just to go to Oklahoma and keep the highs. Yeah, chase do it. Going. I'd love so, that. Interesting there. Headline number three, Saints cut three-time pro bowler guard Larry Warford. Bye, Larry. Um, yeah, Larry's gone. They saved $7 million in cap. Uh, he was expected to, let's see here, hit nearly $12.9 million. Not this year. Uh, not going to happen. But would you believe it or not, uh, there are already teams, of course, that are looking at him. Best believe. Imagine that. Um, so other than that, let's get on to well, wait a second. Sure. I want to give Matt a lot of credit. <laughs> Holy I, shit. I watch a lot of sports. ESPN's in the background. All three, all those stories like broke this morning. I, yeah. I didn't. Brilliant. Yeah. That's what I do, so, man. I'm constantly like, on the feed. Seven you know? o'clock this morning. I saw all three of those stories. I'm like, good for you, Matt. Yeah. You get it. You, you're slinging bread all night. My show prep home. begins when the show starts. Basically. Nice. All right. So as soon last as that headline. Minuteman connection comes yeah. in. Yes. <laughs> as soon as I get to the parking lot, yeah. that's when I do it. All right. So um, let's go on to the last headlines, which is going to be our dissection. I hope that's the word. Dissection yep. sure. of the Vikings and Packers schedules. Okay. So we'll start with the best team, the Vikings. Yes. Uh, week one is going to be against the Green Bay Packers at home. There it is. Get it going. So uh, thoughts on week one? Win. Big win. <laughs> you guys went two and you guys won two and four in your division. So uh, the reason why I will give it the W, and as Greg had talked about kind of prior to the show, is that it's a week one game at home. So uh, that obviously gives us the advantage. Well, not Simple really if there's that. no fans. But. Uh, regardless of that, you know, it's still going to be the atmosphere of it. Um, so I'm going to go with that. I think, uh, yeah, so we'll just go as that. Yeah, Greg? that's what we're going as. Greg, I want to know what you guys did in the offseason – to improve your team, we right, drafted Greg. needs. You drafted players. When, yep. was last, when was the last time you you said? Hold on, hold on. Anyone hold on. Okay. We drafted needs. Yes. Did you draft needs? No, not okay. not the first. So two that picks. gives us the advantage. No, but okay, you guys were ten and six. Name me one player. Come you on, drafted. look at our schedule comparatively. Look at. Tell me one player. The when was the last time a player was drafted in the NFL where they said, you know what? You <laughs> suck. Yeah, when was the last? When was the last time that they, they said, "Oh my God, that guy"? So Greg is the team taking the Packers week to one. win Week One. Yeah, all right, that's fine. You haven't uh, beat us in like two years. That, all right, on, on to the next one. We're gonna beat so you twice this year. Vikings Week Two at Indy to win. play the Colts. That's an interesting matchup. I think it's a very we, tough we, matchup. Not against um, Philip. We play Philip very well. We're going to knock them sure. around. And I think that the really big debater is how our offensive line will hold up against, you know, Buckner and the rest of that Colts defense. So that that is an interesting matchup as well. On to week three at home against the Titans. Derrick Henry coming. Well, who do you the, got? What do you mean? You got Colts winning? You basically said they are. So I don't know. Uh, I I. I'm not going to come out with my. We're two and zero. Oh. I think you guys have a better chance of beating the Titans than you do the Colts. Well, I think we're going to win Week Three against the Titans. Yes. That's three and zero. Oh. Okay. So then uh, we'll go on to Week Four at Houston. That's a W for that. Four and zero. Oh. Um, I do not see the Texans being very good this year. I think no. this is Deshaun's last year with them. Agreed. So on to the next one at Seattle. Um, that's another question mark for me. I'm not going to give him the automatic W. Loss. So four and um, one. So that's see, I do pick. Atmosphere. I do pick us losing, Greg. I do think without fans there, that will help us. So well, they might have fans there by that. You never know. Yeah. Um, you never know. <laughs> then we're coming back home against the Falcons. W. Win. I will take a W there. Five and one. Um, bye week. 
Five and one. And then we're going to Lambo. Six and one. <laughs> like I was telling Matt, this schedule worked out so great for you guys. You guys play the Packers and get all the time in the world to, you know, yeah, prepare for it twice. Sure. Yeah. Why so wouldn't we? We'll get ourselves some cheese. Well, it does suck. We'll just it. as fans, it does suck that you guys both Packer Viking games are done by the beginning of no, by November first. I like cheese. Last year, at least it was fun. I like, I like we'll get them out I the like way. Cheese, cheese. Yeah, like Greg likes cheese. I like um, and then we six and go one home against Detroit. Seven w. and one. Sorry, Frank. Uh, w there. We'll get you uh, on the show right before that. <laughs> yeah. Game. And then we go to the Bears. Don't tell me win, even though you lost to him twice last year. I think yeah. we will win. We will win. I don't I think, think you'll, I think you'll win too. But you I don't guys are ignoring the fact that you guys won two and four in your division. All of a sudden, you guys are great. division killers. Great. I'm breaking them down. Okay. I think that as a whole. Wait till Greg gets I feel to Green like Bay there's going here. to be, be more undefeated. chemistry this year than last. Yeah. Obviously, it's I'm still got question marks in here, Greg. I, I'm not just giving them automatic I, W's. I'm, I'm, it's I'm, a and tough this is a, schedule. This Greg. is a home bear game. When we get to nope, Soldier nope, Field. No, this is at. This at oh, this is at. So that's gonna be a tough one. I'm gonna take a loss at Chicago. Plus, I think that might be our L because it's a late night game. Oh, that's right. It's the yeah. ESPN game. So, so did I give that a game. win? No. I, so we're seven and two. Okay. Then we Do, are, Would you like to apologize? Because we just picked them to lose. After I went out of range. No, 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 no. I I apologize, Greg. All right. Next week. Seven and two. Next week we're going to Dallas. To seven and Jerry three. Jones. I, I will take a W there. I'll I take would. a W on the road. I don't think that uh, I don't think Dallas is that good. I take a W. They got Dallas. Dallas is plenty They're going to have one of the best offenses think, in the league this year. So and then, uh, but I'll still take the W for the Vikes. Uh, then we're going to go see Teddy. Yep. Oh yeah. Eight, uh, eight and three. That's a W. Yeah. Um, even though that team's going to be debatable. Then we go to Jacksonville. That's a W. Nine and three. Uh, then we come back to play the Goat. Oh no, those yeah, are all at home games. Then we're gonna go see the goat. Yep. Nine, go see Tom. Nine and four. Um so you're taking the hell. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. That's interesting. That's another one of my question mark games. Um I don't have question marks. I have just facts. Yep, that's okay. It's still early. Um uh, then we are going to no ten and four. We're at Chicago here. We're coming home. Yep, to play the Bears. Then last two games at the Saints on Friday, Christmas. Ten and five. It's gonna be a bad Christmas. And then at Detroit. Eleven and five is how we end our season. So we'll see if uh, if GBG thinks his team has enough to take the division from the an Packers eleven schedule. and five Vikings. On to the Packers schedule. Here you go, Greg. So week one against the Vikes. They'll win that. <laughs> Right. You guys haven't beaten the Vikings. Oh, in the, in the last time you was a tie. Week yeah, we don't two? beat the you, Vikings. You're week, right. We are the you, Vikings. You, you, week lost. two, yeah. uh, at home against the uh, Lions. We'll win that. Week three on the road against the Saints. That's that I'll give a loss to. Week four at home against the Falcons. Win. Week six because you have a week five bye. Yep. Uh, week six. At, on the road against the box. Two weeks to prepare, we'll beat them. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> we were 13 and three last right, year. Right. Oh, seven, God. You're forgetting. We're not. Last a, year. Yeah. Yep. Which yep. is the last time we played. Seven. Week seven on the road against the Texans. Same logic. We'll win. Eight at home against the Vikes. At home, we'll win. Oh, they. <laughs> week nine on the road against San Fran. <laughs> we'll, we'll lose that one. Week 10 at home against Jacksonville. We'll lose that one. Week 11 on the road. I'm sorry. Against... Wait, 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 wait. Did I say, well, no, we'll win the Jaguars. Oh, okay. no, you said yeah. you'd lose. Week 11. I was already looking ahead. Week 11 on the road against the Colts. We're going to lose that one. Okay. Week right, so you're 12. Seven and three right week now. Week 12 at home, Monday Night Football. Bears. Bears. We'll win that. 13 at home against Philly. Win that. Week 14 on the road against Detroit. Win. Week 15 at home against Teddy. Win. 16 at home against Tennessee. It's a tough one, but it's at home. Cold weather will win that. 17 on the road against the Bears. We'll win that. Wow. 13 and three again, huh? Just like last year. Interesting. Okay. I just, what I find funny is, Matt, you said that the thing that the the Vikings got going for them is chemistry. Mm -hmm. But yet you guys. 
you know, went against you guys thought that, you know, teams like Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, for example. Sure. And um, the Colts bringing mm-hmm. a lot of new players. Mm-hmm. They're not going to have any chemistry. I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. You you can compile all this talent like Dallas is doing, like Tampa Bay is doing. Yeah. But if they don't work well together, sure. you can't just compile talent and assume they're going to do well. Yep. That's What's crazy to me is marks. we got better through the draft and free agency. You did not. We did get better through free agency. With who? Not the draft. We With got who? McKinney. We got Funches. We got oh Funches. No, I said McKinney and Funches. and Funches. Yes, and Funches. He's a he's a number two receiver. Since when? Since he was with Carolina for years as a number one receiver, and then now he's a number two. Pull up us. some Funches stats. He's probably got three Not touchdowns in his career. I think um, this it, is this it. Will is, be a great season. You're getting very worked up because we're passionate, just like you're passionate. You gave your team 13 wins. How many wins do we give our team? 11. Okay, so we're in the realm of yeah. reality. Okay, which is, I gave my team the exact same record we had last year, but you're not any better. But that's crazy to me. Is with an aging quarterback, you're still going to give yourself 13 wins. He's 36 years old with He's a not... tougher strength of schedule than you had last year. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Okay. Good. That's good. We'll see how it goes. Good. We'll see what week Jordan Love steps into the starting role. <laughs> Great, though. I love it. Fired Let's up. Learn some. Th- we should almost do a rants now. Oh God! I got my blood pressure already up. Should we wait? No, we're gonna bring it back right, down. Go ahead. Then back up. Oh, ah, football! Come on, come on! Ready to get learned? Teach. Got, got my glasses teach, on. I'm ready, man. To, teach. Ready to teach. Today in history. Yeah. In 1502. Christopher Columbus leaves Spain on his fourth and final trip to the New World. Mm. 1785, British inventor Joseph Brahma patents the beer pump handle. Ah, 1868, (laughs) the city of Reno, Nevada is founded. Mm. 1901, Cleveland's Earl Moore no hit Chicago White Sox in nine innings, but loses in the 10th, 4-2. Damn it, Earl. This is a this is a key one right here. 1914, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson proclaims Mother's Day. Beautiful thing for, wow. for all you moms out there. Yeah, it's a good one. Woodrow. 1944, country singer Jimmy Davis got all his albums. Becomes governor of Louisiana. Ah, down wow. there. Yeah. 1945, new balada ball used in baseball. It's 50 percent livelier. Ooh. 1946. First hour-long entertainment TV show, NBA, NBC's Hourglass premieres. So that was the first hour show ever. Beautiful. Yeah, 1949, Billy Joel, born in New York. Yes. 1958, I'm going to botch this. Russian Mikhail Botvinnik Sounds recaptures great. the World Chess Championship. Checkmate. Heavy hitter. Bobby Fischer. Heavy hitter. 1960. U.S. becomes the first country to legalize the birth control pill. Oof. All right. <laughs> no comments necessary. Yeah. Nin- yeah. 1960. <laughs> Tony Gwynn was born in go. Los Angeles, California. The greatest hitters of all time. 1962. <laughs> the Beatles signed their first contract with EMI Parlophone. Mm. 1975, Brian Oldfield shot puts 22.86 meters. That's a world record. 1979, Schwing. Showing. Rosario Dawson was born. 1980, Greg was in line for this. Slasher horror film, Friday the 13th is released. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was four. I wasn't even alive. Four. Yeah, because I'm like nine years older than you, and I would have been four. So, yeah. In about five years, you have been bored. My dad hadn't even graduated yet. 4D. 1984, <laughs> Prince Fielder. Ah, baby boy. Was born in Ontario. There he is. California. <laughs> 1985, <laughs> Jake Long was born. There he is. 1987, Oriole Eddie Murray is the first person to switch hit home runs in two consecutive mm. games. Mm. 1992, this was a tough day for Greg. Final episode of Golden Girls airs on NBC. Shed a couple tears that day, Greg. 2002, 
former Notre Dame head coach, Dan oh. Devine, yeah. dies. R.I.P. Nope. 2009, Chuck Daly, American Basketball Hall of Fame coach, dies of pancreatic cancer. R.I.P. He might be brought up in a little bit. Go ahead. And little Richie died today. Little oh. Richie. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the dude with the wave with the Jerry Curl hair, the entertainer guy. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Entertainer guy. He's a singer. What damn it? <laughs> yeah, but he's artist. A, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, that entertainer guy with the yeah, long hair. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. in TV shows yeah. and movies and stuff. Beautiful. Thanks, Mike. Sports rant. Sports rant. Yeah. Or rant. Who's going? I'm fired up. All right, I'll go first. I'm going to be very calm about this rant. Uh, the only thing on sports for the past couple of weeks has been the whole um, the last dance, the Bulls season. And what they brought up a few weeks ago or last week was um, the whole idea of Isaiah Thomas getting snubbed from the 1992 dream team why do you quote it they because, were the dream team well that's just the name that they were given well here's the thing isaiah give a name not an air quotes name. okay here's the thing isaiah you were griping and whining that you got snubbed for john stockton and turned it into a race issue well here's the reasons why it wasn't number one you're an ass okay that's simple you're part of the team called the bad boys but here's the thing you weren't a bad boy rick mahorn bill lambeer joe dumars uh, Dennis Rodman, those guys are the bad boys. Pulse, you were yeah. like you were like the little weasel in a bar fight that throws the first punch and hides behind the jukebox. Mm -hmm. Your coach, Chuck Daly, was the coach of the dream team. Yeah. If he really wanted you on the team, he would have gotten you on the team. Maybe you just weren't that good. Mm -hmm. Maybe you weren't better than John Stockton. Mm -hmm. And then after your career, when you know what, you could have said to yourself, you know what, I'm going to prove that I'm a good guy. You had screwed up the Toronto Raptors, you bankrupted the CBA, you took a team in the Indiana Pacers, which Larry Bird had in the Eastern Conference Finals, and then you put them in the toilet. You then went into broadcasting where you got along with nobody. You abandoned <laughs> your best friend, Magic Johnson, when he got diagnosed with HIV. And then when you took over the Knicks, run by the most worthless or, um, owner in all of sports, mm. You were accused of sexual assaulting an, uh, an employee there where you had to pay $11.5 million in a settlement. So here's the thing, Isaiah Thomas. It's called hush money. Maybe you weren't not brought on the dream team because you weren't good enough. Maybe this whole idea of this team was to be ambassadors for the sport worldwide, and you were just an asshole. Mm. Deal with it. Mm. I'm done. Oh, 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 really? <laughs> can you feel the tension in the air right now? I know I can. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Down there in my plums. Right down in the plums. So I'll go next then. Might Ooh. as well. Yeah. Uh, so my rant is going to be on Earl. Not your cousin, Earl. Earl Thomas. Ooh. Um, so Earl Thomas, obviously, I hope you guys have heard about it. Um, basically, uh, him and his wife got into an altercation. Um, this all There's where the air quotes are. <laughs> yeah, <good>. yeah. Altercation <laughs> um, that he stated is really nobody's business. Okay, let's get into this altercation, shall we? Yeah, so let's make it our business. He left his house, proceeded to go with his brother. His bro. Um, not his not his bro, his brother. His brother. Earl. Yeah. Not brother. Yeah, his brother. Brother, brother Earl. Um, so they proceed to go and join a bunch of females um, where she... Floozies. Yeah, groupies. So his wife pulls up the Snapchat, pulls up the map, sees where he's at, Horrible invention, but I guess if you need it, there it is. Well, it's horrible if you actually exactly where you're at, you moron. If just yeah, anyway, turn the notification off. Just it shouldn't be an issue because we don't do that type of shit. So, anyways, so his wife proceeds to find him with a bunch of her friends going in. She's got a gun. One of her friends has a knife. Um, they go in. Basically, she takes the cartridge out of the gun. Uh, they're still around in the chamber. She doesn't know about it. She says she was going in just to scare him. But this whole ordeal happens, and he states that stuff like this happens. Where on earth? I, I understand, <laughs> yes, stuff like this does happen, and it's on the news, okay? So for this to be nobody's business at a time where there's literally nothing going on in sports world, and you're to say that 
Ah, you guys just don't worry. Stuff like this happens. Sorry, Earl. Stuff like this doesn't happen, and it made the news. So not only that, but then people are framing him as the victim. He is. They're... He had a gun pointed to his head. Understandable. Bullet. Understandable. I and get it... that aspect of it. But still, don't act like this is nobody's business and that you're a saint. You ain't the saint. Shit was happening. You should have dealt with it like a reasonable person and dealt with your relationship in a positive way. If it's not working out, separate. Then you can go be with all the floozies and thoughts that you want to be with. First off, these prof- I'm, I'm ranting off your sure, rant. Let's go. These professional athletes have shit worked out with their significant others. We don't live like this. They do. Sure. So some some wife who is leave, you know, pulling a gun out of their $13 million mansion that he provided for. His gun. His gun, his yep. everything. Yep. You just, you do your job. I'll do mine. I'm going to go on the road. I'm going to talk to these females. This is what I'm going to do. This is what professional <laughs> athletes do. And she's got the audacity to pull a gun on him. I don't think that's the case, though. I don't feel like all that is what if, professional athletes yes, do. If they had an understanding, if, which, if yeah, she if, would pull the gun on him. The understanding <laughs> is I'm in the NFL. You leave me the hell alone, she woman. She shouldn't have pulled the gun. But this stuff doesn't. Here's just my dude, Don't shoot on your wife. She's stuff going like to this jail. This doesn't happen, and your business is everybody's business because you're a professional athlete and Ooh. a pro bowler at that. Good rant. I like that. Way to get involved. Good. I don't want to talk about my rant. All right, that's fine. He's a chomo. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> oh, how do I get this off here? There it goes. Beautiful. What do we got next? Oh, oh. you just. You get tight oh, here, boy. Here we go. Welcome to another edition of Back to Back. It was the Charlie Z. Back to Back. There it is. Oh, there, that's yeah, good. there it is. Yes. Beautiful. With Ben's verse, GBG, and your yeah. host, Mike Reed. All right. Well, you know, real quick, what, three weeks sure. ago, last time we had a legitimate trivia game. Legitimate as it was. Um, They're all legitimate, was, Greg. Correct. Well, I'm saying we had Tyler George. We had that one on, and that was great. He sure. a little bit of a delay. It was brought to my attention by my mother. Yeah. Oh. Who Happy watched Mother's the show. Day, Terry. Hey, Happy Terry. Mother's Day, Terry. Michaels. Um, Michaels. That, um, after when it was on the last question tiebreaker, sure. I guessed how many stitches were in a baseball. Yeah. And then when you I got it, it wrong, when I got it wrong, yeah. my mom brought it to my attention mm-hmm. that Mike may have nudged Matt when he was given the choice. Now that there's one thing, one thing only that shocked me about blasphemy. This. It sure. shocked me to my core. And that thing that shocked me about this. Yeah. I had no idea. My mom watched our show. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, well, I I still have yet to believe that. Um, yeah, you know, regardless. we're in tight quarters here. Yeah, Greg. you know, things happen <laughs> over here. God, all right. And I'm the thing okay is, it. he's pouting because he couldn't even have won because he answered too quickly and got it wrong. I'm okay with it. I all just, right, I back to back. I watched our show. All right, just for the viewers and listeners to know, um, I am warming up, heating up. What that means is I have three consecutive wins in a row, regardless of asterisks. And such. So three in a row. If I win today, I will be on fire. So yeah. for any new viewers or listeners, yeah. back to back. Yeah. Is two questions. Correct. So here's an example. Yep. A wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts and Han Solo and Star Greg. Wars. Greg. That would be Marvin Harrison Solo or Harrison Ford. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wow. See, he's already starting off on the run. He's jumping the gun today, people. All right. All right. Now, there is a theme for every question of back-to-back. You will get that theme probably after question two. So, sure. remember, your name is okay. your buzzer. Yep. Matt, 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 Matt. Question number one. I was a two-sport athlete and brothers in a singing group. Matt Jackson 5. Matt Jackson 5 is wrong. Damn it. <laughs> That would be Bo Jackson such- Jackson Five. Oh, Bo Whoa! Jackson Five. Did he say Jackson twice? I said Bo Jackson Five. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Bo Jackson no. Jackson Five. He got it right. Damn, so still, that would have been who the hell is Matt? Who the hell's Matt? Yeah. Oh, I jumped the gun. I got excited because <laughs> yeah. I Matt it right Jackson away. Five. Oh, oh, wow. That's all right. I'll give you. Too much information doesn't make the answer wrong. 
On to the next one. A former Seminole running back and a county in Minnesota. Matt. Matt. Delvin Cook County. That's right. Okay. Don't overthink it. Interesting. A yeah. county. In yeah. I, had, I thought I was like, wait, where's Cook County, Minnesota? Up north. You can research her. Maybe Terry will tell you later. Question number three. Sat out a year due due to a contract dispute in a city in Minnesota. Sat out a year due to a contract dispute. So I am rarely going to do this. What was the first answer? Who was it? Set out for a year due to a contract dispute. Yeah. Remember, this is themed. Yeah. Yep. I guess it's all Vikings. Doge, you're getting on the board. Le'Veon Bell Plain. Oh, wow. Good one. That was a deep one. Yeah, I wasn't thinking that. Good. Good one. Good job, Doge. Question Tied number up, four, right? Doge. You one can find these. him on Twitter at CBD Doge. Yeah. Question number four. Sat out half a year due to contract dispute and a forward for the Boston Celtics. Wow, Doge takes the lead. Melvin Gordon Hayward. I should have known it. Man, I'm just off. I'm off. All right, here we go. Nickname Sweetness and great on SNL. Greg. Greg. Walter Peyton Manning. That's right. Didn't even have to get to the two-time Super Bowl winner. Just great on SNL, which Good job. he is. Good he job. is phenomenal. He is funny man. He is a funny man. Well, it's tied with Doge and GPG. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Benz has got one. Delvin yep. Cook County. At least he got the Viking one there. Man, bud. I should have had two, though. Running back drafted by the Colts and a pop singer. Matt. You can take it if you want, Greg. Time has elapsed. Oh, Greg. Greg. Nope. Greg, um, that would be Jonathan Taylor Swift. Yeah, I can't wow. think of his first name. Isn't that I'm, crazy? Isn't that crazy? I couldn't think of the pop singer. <laughs> I was about to say Taylor Swift. I'm going to give it to Greg, but here's the thing. If you guys go silent and the TikTok clears, yep. point Doge. Okay. okay. So No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So Greg gets it this time, but yeah. Doge is yeah, yeah. pissed right now. Yeah. Question number seven. Green Bay, Greg took a lead over Doge. Single-handedly beat the Patriots and the first wide receiver drafted in this year's draft. Matt. Yep. Derek Henry Ruggs. Go with it. Yeah. Wow. Go with it. I was single-handedly, I was thinking Eli Manning. I know, <laughs> I know, but I knew Derek Ruggs. Henry's yeah. literally single. Yeah, Ruggs was your yeah. easy one yeah. to, to fill it in. So yeah. good job, Benz. Benz gets on the board again with two. Green yep. Bay Greg with three. And Doge with two. Question number eight. Let me see how many I got here. I think I only got two left. Yep. Two left. So Greg can win it with this. Benz needs this one. Yep. Or Doge. I do feel like Greg might get this one. Signed with the Dolphins and famous radio personality. Jordan Howard Stern. Oh, darn it. That's a good one. Yeah. Doge ties it up. Yeah. Oh my God. If you get this, we're in a three-way tie, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with one. All right, go. I should have had 10. I knew it. Damn it, Mike. Doge for the win. GBG for the win. Or Benz for the tie. Question number nine. Led these Hawks in rushing and former TRL host. Matt. Chris Carson Daly. Woo! Let's go, baby. Oh my it ain't over yet. goodness. It ain't over yet. Gracious. 
All right. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right. We're just going to throw this on for a second here. Give me a. <laughs> Oh, it's brilliant. So while he's doing that, let's just fill in uh, our viewers and listeners. So you can obviously listen to us here live on Facebook. You can listen to us live on RTF Sports page for Facebook. You can view us after the show on YouTube. If you want to stream it on, go ahead. Stream or it to our your television. We can also go to twistsportstalk.com. All right, I got it. All right, here you go. All right. The tie-breaking question. Get ready to buzz in quick, fellas. Leads the NFL all-time in rushing in a type of gun. Matt. Gr Matt. Emmett, Smith, and Wesson. For the win! Let's go! He's on fire! The comeback Let's winner! Go! The comeback kid! Oh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Comes back to make Woo! it a three-way tie. Keeps me on my heels. I gotta come up with a last minute question. Ooh, that one's for you, Mom. Oh my there God. Go. Happy Mother's Day, Mama Benz. That oh was my for God. you. That was great. Did that feel good? Oh. Take that, Greg. I'm proud of you. Thank you. God, what a fun filled comeback. That was fun. That was fun to be oh, a part of. Yeah. Love that. Oh, way to go, Matt. Man. Woo. God, Thanks. I'm all fired up. Woo. All right. All right. So we talked about it uh, via social media earlier this week. Yeah. We are going to do our first ever NFL oh. fantasy football mock draft. Now, Way I got it early. set up yeah. here. So we have it set up. A PPR league. Yep. A snake draft. Yep. 12 teams. Correct. We're going to randomize our position. Beautiful. One quarterback, two running backs, two receivers, a tight end, a flex, a yeah. defensive kicker, an eight. Bench positions, Greg. Yep. Eight benches. So we're going to do the draft together, kind of break it down. Sure. Here's our randomized pick. And we're going to get pick number one. one. Should we randomize it again? Yeah. yeah. I don't want the number one overall. Sixth pick. Sixth yeah, is I good like one. that. That's like a good that. one. All right. So we got the sixth pick in the draft. Sure. Let's get in it. Let's get in it. Start your draft. How much time is in between picks? You know? We have all the time in the world. Okay, beautiful. All right. But in the meantime, they go immediately. They go immediately. <laughs> yeah. All right. So how did it fall? First so five. it just tells us who is available. So Elvin Kamara. Let's see. Well, first off, we have the sixth pick in the draft. Yeah. My advice would be running back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, Elvin Kamara are off the board, as well as mm -hmm. Michael Thomas. Those were our first five picks. Sure. Now, this thing is telling this thing is telling us just for the listener that Dalvin Cook is the realistic pick Correct. based on his injury. I would go with Derrick Henry. I mean, I, and I'm not saying that because I'm not a Viking fan. I'm saying that right now you got to chalk him up to missing three or four games this year, just based on history. I don't think you'd disagree with me, Matt. Uh, I disagree with you just this year, um, just because it's fantasy football. We got to go with your best available. I understand what you're saying. I do also take into account that the strength of schedule. Um, so, strength of schedule for the Vikings is pretty high this year. I think we're tied for the tenth. Uh, hardest schedule. Uh, Tennessee is down at like twenties. Twenty, yeah. Well, when you get so, two games against Jacksonville, sure. You know. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, I do like Derrick Henry. Um, I think they're going to get their money's worth this year and really, Bob, make him earn the big bag again. So interesting. What do you think, Mike? You're the deciding factor. Uh, well, this is a Minnesota-based sports show, and I cannot uh, go without getting Delvin. Here's the thing, though. I do agree with Greg, and we will, um, knowing Delvin Cook's injury history, mm. we're going to address our depth at running back later on so that we can be stout there. Sure. So we took Delvin Cook with the sixth pick. And we're back on the clock. 
Now, like Greg said, the experts have us taking Travis Kelsey here, but we're going to take a look. Let's see who's available. So Kenyon Drake. Ooh, Josh Jacobs. I like that a lot. Yeah. Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, Melvin Gordon are there. All of the quarterbacks are still there. Uh, do you want to do you want to take care of the, the the two starting running backs needs right off the bat? I mean, it's kind of like the smart thing to do in a twelve team league. What is the top wide receiver available right now? Kenny Galladay, Allen Robinson, Mike Evans, DJ Moore, <sighs> Juju, Odell, Lamari. There's depth that goes down. Sure, I like Evans here. I do. Um, but you know, like you said, do you want to get your backs? I obviously want to go back because you took Delvin. So you need to have a strong number two back. So the top backs available are Melvin Gordon. Uh, Kenyon Drake at nine, Josh Jacobs at 11. Yeah. Clyde Edwards Hilaire at 15, not touching that. 16, Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, Melvin Gordon, Chris Carson. Yeah. So, um, it's tough, man. It is. Um, with the Cardinals, Kenyon Drake, that's a tough one. I mean, ESPN's got him ranked at 12 right now overall, um, but it's tough. So Josh Jacobs, 11. Yeah. Okay. I'd say Jacobs. Yeah, yeah we'll go with Josh. That's I like that. We'll like fire that, that away, and we'll see what receivers are, yep. are there next. So as of right now, so the maybe... experts thirteen percent agree with us. Huh? Interesting. Piss off, mate. Yeah. There you go. All so, right, we so got we our got starting Dalvin. running backs. Yep. Dalvin and Josh Jacobs. So Lamar Jackson off the board here. Yep. So Kenny Galladay, seventh ranked on here. DJ Moore, Juju Smith. Cooper Cup, Adam Thielen, Keenan Allen, Cortland Sutton. I, Zach Ertz is the best available. Kelsey and Kittle are off the board. Um, my opinion, I say we hit right wide receiver here. Yes. Um, so my opinion for me, who I'm high on this year, who I think is going to have a great bounce back year is going to be Juju. Obviously, you got Big Ben, who could be the comeback player of the year. I could see that happening, um, especially with how weak the Patriots are going to be this year as well. Um, so I'm going to go, my personal pick would be Juju here. I think that's great value in the third round. I like Cortland Sutton here. Oh, I do like Cortland too, but now that you see all the weapons that they just drafted as well, a lot of Mel's to feed, lots of talent. He was great on my team last year. I loved having him. Um, but Drew Locke over Big Ben, I think the trouble is and I, I get it, but yeah. look at what Juju did without Big Ben. Sure. Big Ben is old and big and a big lug. If he gets hurt, Juju automatically as your number one wide receiver, yeah. you lose him. Yeah, he's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is something that when you do when you're drafting a wide receiver, you got to think about is who's throwing him the ball. I mean, right now the best available is DJ Moore. Well, are you putting your faith in Kenny Galladay? Is your best available? Oh, Kenny Galladay. Sure. I'm sorry. So who I like a lot too. Yeah, you know, and he's got a quarterback who'd be throwing to him that throws for you know a crap ton of yards. Mm -hmm. Now is Stafford going to have that bounce back year? Because last year he was hurt for a lot of the year. If, if you think that Stafford's going to come back and have a great year, well, then you yeah. got to go with him. Yeah, and also, I mean, DJ Moore, a lot of people are high on him. He's supposed to project it as a top 10 wide receiver, and that's because Teddy loves those those quick slot routes. I could see it. I, I, don't, see like, I don't like drafting. I look at DJ Moore as a number two. Sure. I don't like drafting a number two. Is Allen Robinson number one. still on the board? No, he's not. Okay, interesting. All right. So there you go. Um, so I would go Galladay. I would, I would agree. Okay, go ahead. Kenny G. Kenny, Kenny G. Fiddle. Kenny G's jazz musicians. He's smooth. All right. 49% of the experts agree. So imagine that. They say that's a good pick. Let's see who falls. Ooh, we lost a bunch of guys. Of course. A bunch of guys. Cortland Sutton's still here. Let's take a look. I love who I just saw on there. My vote is going to be for Mark Andrews. I love that value pick. You're getting a great tight end. Put him in the mix. Baltimore is going to be putting up. They have the weakest schedule out of any team this year. So keep that in mind as well. Let's take a look down our board. Sure. 
at some other wide receivers who could potentially be our two. So you're looking, if you don't take an A.J. Brown, mm -hmm. a Kelvin Ridley, yep. a Devontae Parker, yep. a Cortland Sutton, you're going to end up taking as your number two receiver a Tyler Boyd, a Debo Samuel, a Michael Gallup, where I get – Tyler Lockett. Yeah, Tyler Lockett. You know, Terry you're just McLaurin. on another – you're on another tier down. Sure. Where right now we'd be drafting a number two wide receiver – you, if you don't go tight end, yep. we still have Hunter Henry, Zevin Ingrams. Rob Gronkowski is 13. Well, yeah. I mean, that's if they fall. I, it's up to you. I mean, I'm my personal well, – who do we got for running backs available? Because I want to keep that. Melvin game. Gordon, Chris Carson, Jonathan Taylor. Ooh. We have some really good running backs here too. Yeah. David Johnson, James Conner, Devin Singletary, Mark Ingram, Kareem Hunt. Yeah, I mean you're you're taking one of the best. I like that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you might want to go back because you have the depth at wide receiver, and you guys tend to agree that they have depth more depth this year than last year at tight end. So, so we'd be taking yeah, I agree that there's always depth at wide receiver, sure, not as much running back. Yep. So I'd probably say running back or tight end here. Sure. So in my opinion, I'd probably, with the backs on the board, I'm gonna go Carson. That's my personal opinion, just because you guys tend to agree that Melvin Gordon isn't necessarily going to get all the carries from Phillip. Yeah, but do you, okay. I mean, I, I agree with that idea, but do you go with someone like Jonathan Taylor, who you know in that offense by this what? by the time you would probably need him, which is five, six weeks into the season? He'd be our flex potentially. Or flex, but you know that he's going to get the carries. You Over know Marlon? That, what's that? Over Marlon? I here's the That's thing. That's the question mark, though. But but the, the thing is, is, I think that the new tend of the NFL and it's going to be showing up this year yeah. is let's work the crap out of these running backs so we never, never have sure. to pay them. Yeah. And with a guy like Jonathan Taylor who proved that he can carry the ball 40 times a game, you're going to do just that. 2,000-yard yeah. rusher. I like Jonathan Taylor here. I think this is it's, where you would take a guy like him. I mean, it's up to you guys. I mean, ESPN's got Jonathan Taylor at 27. Melvin's at 17, Chris Carson's at 18. So you're going way down. How about is uh is Clyde Edwards Hilaire off the no. board? Yes, he is yeah, off the board. Off. Oh, no. I was gonna say that would be beautiful. You can take your uh you can choose your pick here. Do you wanna oh I can choose? You can, if you, if can you wanna wild card, yeah. Mm. Say I'm I'm heavy on it. Otherwise, you're gonna get outranked. You can get your Carson, otherwise, we're going to no, no, go ahead. Wow, saving it. Yeah, I'll save it. For those of you playing at home, we've each decided that we each get one wild card or we get to overrule sure. the other two. Yeah. So Cortland Sutton would be the expert's pick with A.J. Brown and Mark Andrews there, but Jonathan Taylor is off the board. Still fourth on the depth chart, fourth on the projected. Sure. So, ooh. So then from what I see here, Mark Andrews still on the board. But I am a very big fan of Tyler Lockett. I know Mike's a fan of Devontae Parker. Who's Why wouldn't I be? Yeah, it makes sense. It got him the ring. So, uh, you know, uh, I will still vouch for Tyler Lockett. To You get a number one ride receiver on another team. He always fills the stats. Does have injury prone, though, as well. Um, yeah, Devontae you know. Parker, for me, is the pick here. The experts tend to agree at 58%. Help get me a ring. Um, yeah, and he just emerged last year. He's he's bar none the number one receiver in Miami. So I will go Devontae Parker here. I would go, I would go Devontae too as well, mainly because I think that they're gonna they're, they're gonna really have a concerted effort to ramp up that offense, whether it's with Fitz or Tua. So he's gonna be the beneficiary of whoever the quarterback is. And he's a true number one wide receiver. So I like our team right now where we have three running backs who are all basically number ones and now two wide receivers. I understand you say that. He is a true number one wide receiver. I get are that. Are you gonna use your- But also he's not on necessarily an explosive offense yet. He exploded last year. Understandable, but that's- Exploded. So, and didn't. Lockett no. has been consistent. Devontae Parker is like a Julio Jones. Tyler Lockett is 5'8". I understand that, but Tyler Lockett's still Tyler Lockett. He's shown each year, well, year in and year out, he's going to put up points. We got two for one. Go you can use your wild card. Go ahead. Devontae. Wow. Not using it yet. 
All right. So we have Delvin Cook, Josh sure. Jacobs, Jonathan Taylor, and Kenny Galladay and Devontae Parker. Yeah. Okay. Something interesting just showed up on the board as the number one. Yeah, of course. Is this the point where we kind of shy away from the tight end and go with the quarterback? Well, let's look at the tight end. Because right now, right now, just for those of you, it's Kyler Murray is the projected you should take guy yeah. at 71%. And I personally think that when it, when it comes to wanting a quarterback for your team, maybe not Kyler Murray yet for your fantasy team. I think that he's the guy to go with. I my I personal like, opinion. Go ahead. I like Kyler Murray. Yeah, but you got to take an Evan Ingram here. Yeah, you know you tight end is so you need a tight end. You yeah. have to have a tight end. You grab we grab an Ingram here, and then you can get Gronk as the backup. Yeah, you but, know, Kyler Murray is not going to emerge that much more yeah. than look at here: Russell Wilson, Watson, Drew yeah. Brees, oh, no. Matt Ryan, and Tom that's Brady, what I was going to say Wentz. is just that you know, honestly, you can pick up a quarterback off the waiver wire that's going to produce satisfactory points. So I we, I don't grab a quarterback until later in the rounds. Unless, I'll let other people do it. In the last couple of years of fantasy football, that has actually broke me simply because I'm taking a quarterback too early. And if like last year, Patty had his injuries, which screwed me over or in past years before that, when you try to get an elite quarterback, injuries tend to flare up. You can get the production. I wish I would have had more of a skill player to plug in last year when other guys of that caliber get hurt. So I am going to say, go right ahead with the Evan Ingram. I like that fit two to two to three. Um, I'm using my wild card. I, oh! say, I, say, I, I think that this is the opportunity. This is like last I'm year. I'm going to show you here, though. Greg's going to use his wild card and watch the depth. I mean, we might be able to get a Gronk. Sure. Um, Which is but, not somebody necessarily that I'm trying to No, tackle. I, th not at I all. think this is the point where right, you Kyler, go with the guy who's going to compile fantasy points. Okay. Interesting. Because Drew Brees doesn't do that. But the difference in forever. points from a uh, – quarterback that's down the roster even if it's, it's magic it's is minuscule minimal. all right kyler murray greg used his wild card now let's take a look at our tight ends available are we still there Ingram's still available i'd like an apology no no because the yeah you have as to, a, this is a i mock. still wouldn't take one so we're gonna take evan ingram yep lock him in all right mm -hmm. so now we have our starters Filled out. So besides for our defense and our kicker, of course, we have Kyler Murray, Delvin Cook, Josh Jacobs, Kenny Galladay, Devontae Parker, Evan Ingram, Jonathan Taylor. So now we have eight bench slots to fill. Sure. And a kicker and a defense. Matt, you want to? Yep. So I'm going to weigh in at this pick necessarily. Let's look. So we've got uh, some wideouts still on the board, obviously. Um, a bunch of those. Where are we at in the running back pool right now? At what you got team? Marlon Mack, J.K. Dobbins, James White, Philip Lindsay. I like J.K. here a lot too. Yeah, or I mean, Marlon Mack and get your buffer for Jonathan Taylor. That is very tough. So also, I see on there Ronald Jones. Now Tyler Ronald, Higby. I like Will Ronald Fuller. Jones. I think that Ronald Jones will fill more of a James White role in Tampa Bay since they didn't really go find anybody else, which is surprising to everybody. Um. But go ahead. What were you gonna say? Oh, I I wouldn't touch Ronald Jones with Greg's dick. Well, interesting. Right. Yeah, he, ha a, he has a weird way of saying he has improved <laughs> a damn thing, uh, anything, nothing. Okay. You're basically doing the same thing you did last year with him, which is crossing your fingers and hoping for points. And sure. last year didn't work out, and he he hasn't shown me anything. So I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't take him there. Do you All take right. on Johnson? Uh, no. How about a Jordan Howard? No, not I mean, not me personally. I take, I take, I think we already did our rookie. You know, Hold on. I like Dobbins too. So we got Jonathan Taylor, right? Yeah. yeah. Let, let's take Marlon Mack. That's what I said. You get another yep. good yep. one. Well, you get another good one to see who's going to take the lead role. Yeah. Who's going to be your flex? And if somebody gets hurt, yep, you got him. Handcuff him. Go ahead, take Marlon Mack. Love I like it. that pick. Love on it. to the next one. Yep. Marlon Mack, 2% of the experts agree. They don't know what they're talking about. This is a twist. <laughs> what experts? The experts? We're the experts. Yeah. No, I look at 
solidifying some wide receiver here. Yep. That's what popped up. Um, Emmanuel Sanders, Jamison Crowder. Let's take a bigger look down the list. Sure. At our wide receivers. So Marvin Jones, Jamison Crowder, Elshon Jeffrey, Anthony Miller, Deontay Johnson. Ooh, Jerry Judy. Yep. Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, don't forget Golden to look Tate. for a little Justin Jefferson, who's probably still available. Um, I like that as well. Um, also, you got to think about Henry Ruggs. He's still in this tier right now as well. Curtis Samuel. Yeah, you go with Emmanuel Sanders in this point. I'm taking my wild card. Okay. I'm taking Judy. Ooh, interesting. Okay. There you go. Mike's used his wild card as well. So Judy's off the board. Now let's let them know once you get this all taken care of here. Boom. Now read off the roster for the peeps. Kyler Murray, starting quarterback. That was Greg's wild card. Yep. Delvin Cook was our first pick, followed by Josh Jacobs. Our starting wide receivers are Kenny Galladay, Devontae Parker, now with Jerry Judy on the bench. Evan Ingram starting at tight end. Jonathan Taylor is poised in the flex position, but we also picked up Marlon Mack. Yes. So we have both of those studs. And now we are on again. So our bench consists of a running back and a wide receiver. We got six to go. Yeah. So my pick would be, my suggestion would be for Jared Cook. You get a great tight end, which it's going to get thin. You don't want to run into getting tight ends off the waiver. Um, I like that pick. I think New Orleans has an explosive offense. Yeah, because in, in this spot, if you looked on the list, you're pre, if you don't get Jared Cook right now, you're pretty much going to get a backup tight end. Who is, plays more of like a blocking role? Well, you can so also get like Hawkstra. Noah Fant doesn't block. Mike Jacecki doesn't block. I'm Rob Gronkowski doesn't block. By the time, well, first of all, but Rob, why like, Cook though? Rob, Cook's Rob, 55 Robert, years old. Right That's now, true. Rob Gronkowski right now is number three on the depth chart. Now, granted, it's going to change. He'll be but, he'll be the guy. Maybe it's Tom Brady. I get it, but right now they they would have gotten rid of OJ Howard. I would or say Kevin Bray, but I no. would say Hawkinson. Tight ends typically don't perform in their first year, but he did show signs of he's going to be that stud. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. now he's in year two. You know, I think, yeah, Jared Cook, sure. But, you know, I, I like taking some flyers and a high-risk, high-reward type thing too. Okay. But, I mean, you guys both like Cook. You can outrank me. Eh, I'm good on that then. We're going to pass up on that because I see who's still there. Yeah, and there's, there's plenty, plenty of, of backups. Down. All right, so that's good there. Um, Let's see. So we also still have – We have three receivers, three running backs. Yep. You still got uh, Daryl Henderson on the board. You've got Ronald Jones still there. Anthony Miller. Um, That's where you're at. So, yeah. Oh, that's tough. This is a tough pick. This is where you're getting into it. But also, these aren't going to make or break your team. So let's see here. You're thinking running back? Well, no, I was just seeing who's there. I'm, I'm still – I'm going to go with our wild card. I'm going to use my wild card uh -oh. right now, and I'm going to take Ronald Jones. I know you guys are oh high on him. Oh, my God. I know you aren't high on him, but I think with the right potential there, I mean, that, that could be great. I know how much Tom Brady loves to use – the running back position. He makes horrible running back into great running backs. Four so percent of experts agree. Go. Boom. Drafted. Ronald Jones. Yep. Put him on the squad. So here I think we look at you know backup tight end or receiver. Yeah. Lizard King still look on the at board. Madison. Sammy Watkins 43 is still there. That's where that's where you messed up too. We should have got a Matson for our cook. Yeah, that's all right. I thought you said he's still available. He is. Still he available. is, oh, but right. over Ronald Jones. You oh, just I took a running okay. back position. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. You know, you don't want all, you know, Marlon Mack, Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, no, but at the right. same time, yeah. Madison slides in as a number one yeah. yep. with any cook injury. And he's proven that he can – he's proven unlike Ronald Jones. Let's look yep. at some receivers, tight ends. Literally, they're all still there. Let's go down a little bit more. Sammy Watkins, Miko Hardman, Nikel Harry, Hunter Renfro, Deshaun Jackson, Corey Davis, Larry Fitz. How many picks do we have remaining? Oh, Mims. This is why I'm hot. We have defense kicker and then four bench positions. Okay. 
Interesting. <clears throat> I think you go wide receiver here. Sure. Who would you like to take, Greg? I don't know. If you, I mean, if you're thinking about Sammy Watkins, burns everybody every year. Yeah, but okay. What I'm saying right now is, if you're looking at a at a backup right now, yeah. you're looking at either injury or who to play in a bye week. And so you're kind of thinking, like Mike said, kind of more of a flyer. Sure, go with Mims. And we do have a Judy, so you don't want to be full of rookies either. No, I get, I get that, but you know, why not pick more than one? These wide, these sure. If these wide receivers are so great, all you're looking for is production in one or two weeks. Yeah, to me, that's more of a proven veteran and like a Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, I don't like Sammy Watkins. Well, then, okay. But I get what you mean. Mims is a beast. Yeah, I just I'm surprised you didn't want to go with the Lazard King. No, he's yeah, he, he's, he's, he's he's wide receiver two. No, what do you mean? Who's your wide receiver two? Punches. N- Nickel Harry could emerge as uh, that's true if he's know, got Stidham one. to sing him the biscuit. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'm go. fine with Mims. Okay, I. Sammy Watkins is there. You've got a high power Kansas City offense. They score points. Yeah, but Sammy, it's every week. You got Michelle sure. Hardman there too. I don't yeah. trust anybody outside of Cheetah. Okay. So go ahead. Make the pick. Boom. 9% agree. Denzel Mims. Book him. BB will be happy. He doesn't watch the show, though. You Book him. All right, so we have three left and a defense and a kicker. Sure. Do you take a backup quarterback at some point, or do you just sit and wait for them? I don't necessarily. It depends on who's on the board when we're down to, like, our last pick. Okay. Yeah. I I wait. I I wouldn't even take a backup. I I do. I I don't know. To me – Right now we have go so many decent quarterbacks on the waiver. Tight ends, they've all still been sitting there. I say we grab the Pats, the pa- Patriots defense right here. You think Patriots, not the 49ers? I think the Patriots. Yeah, I think the killed Patriots killed it last year. I think the Patriots will have plenty of opportunities for turnovers because they're probably gonna. Don't you remember fantasy last year? I just think it's funny that when we were doing about it. 45 minutes ago when we were doing our team schedule, you guys are ripping on me for playing off of last year. Yet right now, all you guys are doing is playing off of last year. Joe Piece of Pie, man. Great. Joe Piece of Pie. Piece of Pie. All, all he wrote Fantasy Black Book, man. The, the San Francisco 49ers have one of the best defenses and all the players coming well, back using your logic. Take this in. What about the Pittsburgh Steelers defense? Well, then we can wait. But Pittsburgh Steelers, they have the second weakest schedule. That That's true. And that so might that, wait that's, on, been, that's wait good on logic that right now. Right now, the 49ers, though, are so damn opportunistic sure. with these guys. You know, I'm talking fumbles, intercepts, all this stuff that when it comes to fantasy points, I would just – I'm not I'm not saying when to take them. I would just rather take the 49ers and the Patriots. Right. Then let's wait on defense. I okay. mean, if, I mean, if you're – the Patriots aren't exactly going to be winning 14 of their 16 games where other teams are just, you know – They had a historic defense I'm for a saying, season and a half. I'm saying they were really good. But All this right. year they don't have tight Tom end. Brady. You can. Do you want to go Cook? Do you want to go? I'd go Hawkinson or Gronk. I wouldn't go Cook. Okay, Gronk it out then. All right. He's had a year to rest up. Gronk mode. Gronk it out. Gronky Con. Book him. 18% of experts agree. Book him. Drafted. So we have two bench positions left and a kicker and a defense. So let's okay. look at the defenses. Bob's, I still say Niners Pittsburgh. gone. Pittsburgh gone. Ouch. Then you go Baltimore. So your your first thought was the Patriots, and now you go Baltimore just because of their ranking? No, just because of their strength of schedule. They're playing teams that the, they have the weakest schedule of any team in the NFL this year. Yeah, when you have two okay. games against the Bengals yeah. and the Browns. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Baltimore it is. Welcome. 
Zero percent of experts agree. Money. <laughs> All right, our defense is filled. Let's go through it here. We got Kyler Murray, Delvin Cook, Josh Jacobs, Kenny Galladay, Devontae Parker, Evan Ingram, Jonathan Taylor, Ravens D. Sitting on the bench, we got Marlon Mack, Jerry Judy, Ronald Phone Home Jones, Denzel Mims, and Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. So we've got a kicker and two benches. Yep. This might be a good spot, and the experts do agree to grab your Delvin Cook wingman. Who do you got for wide receivers out there? Deshaun, Hunter Renro. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, right now, I mean, yeah, you can do that, but right now I think you just got to go with the best available player. Yeah, for I don't think with... Madison will get taken by our next pick. But yeah, he could. You got Rashad Penny sitting there. Corey Davis, Hunter Renfro, Deshaun Jackson. Why not go Hunter Renfro? Because he's white. Corey Davis. All right, then go Madison. Madison or Madison. Um, yeah, go ahead. Just, just an easy pick. pick. Tap it in. What? Just Madison for the handcuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then now you just you're banking on Ronald Jones to come through and be that number one guy. Then we I have want two Corey handcuffs. Davis. You, to fill our last bench, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, and then with the last then pick, we'll, just like we'll the kicker. best available kicker. Yeah, Kansas City's kicker, Butker. There he goes. He's off the board. That <laughs> son of a bitch heard me. <laughs> All right, kicker. Ooh, Justin Tucker, number one rated. Yeah, still sitting or there. Or Will Lutz. I like Will Lutz a lot I like too. Will Lutz. Will Lutz. Lutz. They're gonna yeah. score a lot of points. All right, Will Lutz. Will Lutz. Because Baltimore doesn't score a bunch of points. Oh. Lamar. Will Lutz, 1% agree. We're the experts. All right. You say that as if like 99% disagreed and took one other guy. They to wanted us to. I mean, the, the highest... experts want Joe Burrow. Yeah, but the hot. Yeah, okay. Isn't so, that interesting, though, that Joey B is just this, sitting there, right? So this me. wraps up the fantasy mock draft. First. Our final squad. Yeah. Kyler Murray, running backs, Delvin Cook, Josh Jacobs, Jonathan Taylor, Marlon Mack, Ronald Jones, two, yeah. and Alexander Madison. Our wide receivers, Kenny Galladay, Devontae Parker, Jerry Judy, Denzel Mims, and Corey Davis. Our tight ends are Evan Ingram and Rob Gronkowski. Our defense is the Baltimore Ravens, and our kicker is Will Lots. Beautiful. Love wow. It. Great bit. Can't wait for football. Can't wait for drafts. Can't wait for league play. Oh, I love it. In our newest segment. <laughs> Is this going to end or do I just start no. talking? Oh, okay, folks. Here's the thing. Here's what this final thought's all about. If you want to see me in 30 years sitting on my porch with a glass of lemonade yelling at the kids to get off my lawn, it's pretty much what this is going to be like. What I'm going to ask you guys to do is don't be a sheep. Don't be a follower. And if you're going to be, at least learn what you're following. Two examples. Number one, something everyone can relate to. You all have social media. Most of you probably have Facebook. You see these posts all the time. Oh, I found out only 25 people can see my Facebook posts. BS. I post stuff all the time. 50, 60, 70 people like it. If oh. only 25 people oh. can if only 25 people can see it, then I'm not getting 50 thumbs up. Here's the other thing, and this is the more serious one. When we watched the last dance, everyone was so worked up about Michael Jordan, how he didn't endorse a candidate, how he doesn't go out and you know say he's Republican or Democrat. Here's a better question: why do you give a shit? He's worth billions of dollars, is one of the three most recognizable faces on the planet in the early 90s. How does that relate to your life? Here's an idea. Why don't you talk to the guy you work with? Sit down with him at lunch. I know what his political beliefs are. He probably has more in common with you than Oprah or Michael Jordan. Stop caring about what celebrities are going to do in the voting booth and start worrying about how that candidate affects your life. That's all I got. Final thoughts. Uh, yeah. Good job, Greg. Excellent. Yeah. We're out. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you for tuning in to Twist, the weekend sports talk. We'll see you next week for episode 24.
four, Robert Griffith. Stay classy, Minnesota.